Hello and welcome to Rapid Regeneration. I'm David Escamilla. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional. I'm not making any claims about diseases or medical claims. And if you need medical assistance, then seek a medical professional. And if you need medical advice about iodine, then seek a medical professional. I am just a, a natural wellness uh, person who has learned a lot. Um, and I, I was never that interested in health and wellness. I always felt pretty good and everything until I got super sick when I was 22 and I got poisoned with cough medicine and it caused all kinds of problems, nervous system problems, brain fog, exhaustion, fatigue, uh, just messed up my whole entire system and I felt horrible and I lost the will to live for, for four years. I was an empty shell of my former self until I figured out certain ways to detox the body, get all the toxins out of the body, and from there just regenerated and um, got my energy back, got my mojo back, and I'm so grateful for that. I'm forever grateful to that, and now I'm paying it forward. <clears throat> so I'm sharing with you the methods that helped me to do that, but it's not just me, it's so many others. I mean, I, I was helped by other people who said, hey, look at what other people are doing that's working, natural methods. And so many countless people in this world have been saved. Um, and so if you're struggling with a health problem right now, just know there's hope, there's solutions, it's not hopeless. I know some people will discourage you. Um, and if you're already healthy, but you're interested in going to the next level, there's always another level. Always another level. It's a kind of amazing. Um, so this is regarding iodine. Now, just a heads up, this is gonna be involved. There are some nuances to iodine. There's some potential risks. There's some things that you should know, insights that are beyond the obvious regarding iodine. And so this is gonna be a little bit more involved, a little bit longer, because I'm not just gonna sit here and say, hey, iodine's great, go take some. That would be irresponsible of me. Now, when I was putting together the whole program for rapid regeneration, which you can see on rapidregeneration.com, there's a whole program, it's a foundation, it's, it goes in a, in a sort of a sequential order and it covers all these different areas. When I was putting together this information for you, to help you, I thought, you know what, uh, maybe I'm just not gonna include the iodine information because it's too controversial. <laughs> you know, um, on the one hand, you'll have the more natural people saying, well, you shouldn't even take iodine because it's unnatural it's such an isolated mineral. And then on the other hand, you'll have mainstream scientific community saying, well, it's, uh, you know, it goes against conventional wisdom and you're taking too much. And it's very controversial when you, when you touch this subject. And so I thought about, you know, maybe I shouldn't even include it. Um, but that would be unethical of me if I didn't include it even though I'm sure I'm gonna get criticism for this within um, the natural health community and the mainstream community. So I can't win by doing this basically, except that if I know something is helpful to people, I can't omit that information, it's unethical. There are so many reports of people using iodine and having dramatically positive effects, even people that have reversed the most horrific problems with their health using iodine. So I have to share this information with you. God will be the judge of if I'm doing the right thing. But just understand there are nuances, there are risks um, involved. Um, now in my view, the risks of not having enough iodine in your body are far greater than uh, the risks of 
under consumption. Um, I mean, the risks of, of supplementing iodine, sorry. Um, the, furthermore, it seems like the body has a mechanism to defend against taking too much iodine because whatever excess iodine there is will be excreted via the kidneys and urinary tract. So it seems like there is a check and balance in place, but once again, if you require medical assistance, then seek out a medical professional because I'm not that. Um, but iodine is is pretty amazing. It's I look at it before I get into what it is, what a lack of iodine can cause, what are the benefits of iodine, um, how much are people taking therapeutically, um, and just some other nuances to know about it. Um, before I get into that, I just want to say, just understand, this is this is powerful. I I found out about it early on when I was trying to heal myself, and I got into it, um, and I noticed almost immediately an effect, and I was really Im impressed. Um, then a couple years later, I got sold that I shouldn't take it. Um, I trusted somebody who uh, has been a mentor to me in the natural health space, and he was saying, "Oh yeah, don't you know you don't want to take iodine because that can really um, it can really have a harmful effect on the thyroid, and um, and so yeah, you shouldn't take it." Now this person had helped me so much that I just took his word for it, and I I stopped taking it. Um, and I didn't, I didn't verify what he was saying, and that was a mistake. And so for years I didn't take it, um, and I think that that caused me to lose momentum. I could have gotten a lot further, a lot faster. When I ultimately did research the concerns about it, I found that it was not founded. I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about that. Um, but basically, just you know, that's that's the trouble with uh, with finding out what's the truth and discerning that and you shouldn't take anyone just as gospel including myself um, you should learn how to uh, how to think not what to think and and learn how to to vet stuff like that so but I see it now is it unnatural to some degree to take a an isolated element sure you know and that's talked about in, in the other segment about vitamins and minerals um, but you know what? It's uh, We have modern curses and we have modern gifts. The modern curse that we have is living in this world with so much toxicity and iodine helps with that. I'm going to talk about why. And so in a sense, it's a modern solution to a modern problem. And you know what I, I call it is nature's drug. It's really nature's drug. I mean, it's, it is powerful. Um, if you've never experienced it for yourself. Um, but you know what? It's not a good drug for the drug industry because you can't patent it. It's super cheap to extract. So that's not going to help big, big pharma. Uh, but before there was big pharma, it was used as a universal solution. Um, and, and, and going back in the history of iodine. So how does all that work? What is iodine? It's a trace mineral. It's a central trace mineral. There is, there is a receptor site in every cell of the body for iodine. Um, it plays an essential role. If you don't have enough iodine, um, which, which assists cell health, reproductive health, cognitive, mental performance, thyroid function, connective tissue, if you don't have enough iodine, here are some of the issues that are reported. Uh, weight gain, poor weight management, swelling of the throat, uh, tiredness, exhaustion, fatigue, low energy, hair loss, dry skin, uh, issues with menstruation, discomfort, lumps and hardened cysts in the breasts, infertility issues, cognitive impairment, brain fog, poor mood, constipation, cold extremities, and pain and, dis and discomfort in the muscles, joints, and connective tissue. 
not good. Um, now, why are iodine levels so low when you test the soil, the food, and inside of humans? Well, there's a number of theories. Um, one is that we've gotten so we, we've we've migrated away from the sea, you know, because iodine can be found in the sea, um, and we've more got more inland. There's a, a theory that a great flood wiped out the topsoil um, several thousand years ago and left behind sort of a nutrient deprived soil that we get our foods now from. And there's another concept that basically uh, modern humans are so full of modern artificial chemicals that these chemicals can affect the absorption of iodine and also iodine helps to remove these chemicals from the body and so therefore there's an increased need for it um, so those are some of the theories um, why you know because again if God made us perfect and naturally then why would we need to take an isolated mineral so I don't know the exact answer to that question um, I don't know what's the key to the mystery but it does seem to me that based on all the information that I've seen, human beings are very low in iodine. Uh, and it doesn't surprise you because the food is low in iodine, the soil is low in iodine. Um, now there's a few exceptions, like the Japanese. The Japanese, who are one of the healthiest, longest living groups of people on the planet, um, consume about around 15 milligrams on average of iodine per day they eat a lot of seaweed they eat a lot of seafood and um yeah but most of that, most of humankind is is consuming a tiny fraction of that um even people who are eating table salt which is iodized are not getting very much because there's very little iodine in table salt um, it's it sublimates from the table salt when it's stored it gets lost um, and also it's in competition with the chloride that's found in salt so it doesn't get absorbed very well so how much iodine is enough basically to consume this is another area of great controversy there's so many opinions about this um, and by the way when I when I reference iodine it, it, I'm basically referring to either iodine or iodide uh, because the body uses both. There are opinions uh, ranging that the daily intake should be uh, anywhere from 100 micrograms to 50 or more milligrams. This means that the low end of the dosage recommendation uh, versus the high end, the high the high end is 500 times more than what the low end recommendation is. So this is such a huge range. So this is one of the challenging things to discern. These dosages are made up anyways by people who have opinions. But looking back through history, at the second half of the 1800s and the first half of the 1900s, iodine was used so commonly um, and people understood the powerful effects of it. And a dose was typically around 15 to 100 milligrams, somewhere in that range. There was some mega dosing that would happen for certain acute um, instances where someone would actually be taking 1,000 or 2,000 milligrams, uh, but generally it was more like 15 to 100. Now by the 1950s, a phobia of iodine developed in the mainstream community. Um, now this is due to claims that uh, basically there was two men by the name of Wolf and Chekhov and these were industry men uh, and they made some uh, assumptions which were unsubstantiated regarding T4 release in rats that were being studied and basically the thyroids of rats and they basically drew some conclusions that were were not logical um, I'll explain my personal view on that but 
uh, this resulted in a in a 50 year kind of chilling chilling phase a freeze where basically professionals became nervous to recommend iodine people would recommend not taking any more than let's say 100 to to 300 micrograms which is a tiny amount so therapeutic use of higher doses went out of fashion um, although it was still a re it was still recognized that a a lack of iodine can cause major health problems and so the governments still continue to iodize salt um, so the, and we're just going back through the history of understanding this um, now what happened was in the late 1990s there was a scientific investigation that was undertaken by um, some people including Dr. Guy Abraham, Dr. Jorge Fletches, uh, Dr. David Brownstein, and this was referred to the Iodine Project. And basically these people conducted laboratory um, <clears throat> research and clinical research. In other words, they worked with thousands of patients to document um, more accurately the effects of iodine. And what they found was that when an, when an adequate amount of iodine is consumed over time, the body will retain about 1,500 to 2,000 um, milligrams of iodine in its tissues and excrete out any excess consumed uh, via the kidneys and urinary tract. And what happened was a test was developed which concluded that a whole, bad, whole body saturation was achieved um, basically when somebody would take would consume a tablet of iodine, 50 milligram tablet, and uh, over 24 hours the urine would be measured and if this person excreted 90% of that iodine in their urine, it was concluded that the body was saturated with iodine because it didn't need to absorb very much of that tablet. So if it excreted 90% or more, then basically the body was saturated. And that was the test that was, that was developed and the conclusion that was made. Um, there's, there's two tests that can get some insight. That's the second one. The first one is just to take a, a spot test, which will, will tell you how much iodine is in the body right now. The second test is a loading test. Uh, where you measure um, the urine over 24 hours after consuming that dose. Um, and so now if very little iodine is excreted after you take that dose over the 24 hours, if you excrete out only 25% or 50%, that means your body is starved for iodine as the theory goes. And so it's basically sucking up more of the iodine, it's absorbing it because it needs it. It's not saturated with it. So this was the test and the, uh, the sort of the premise that was developed. Now you can test your own iodine levels. I did. Um, and you can take both of those tests. Uh, just go at home and, and mail them in and just go to rapidregeneration.com forward slash uh, iodine test. So now how is it determined that 90% was the magic number or above uh, for the adequate amount of iodine saturation and below 90% is, it means that you're not, you don't have enough iodine in the body. Well, this is where it's not black and white, um, but among other logical considerations, scientific uh, sort of premises, also the people in the iodine project were considering the reports of the patients, how well the patients felt, how much energy they had, how, how well they performed throughout the day. You know, looking at different levels of when they were saturated, different levels of iodine. And it so happened that the patients who were reporting their best feelings of well-being and, and energy and performance were excreting 90% or more of the iodine dosage. In other words, their bodies were saturated with iodine. 
um, and this premise was based on thousands of patients. And so even though I like to take things with a grain of salt, um, you know, this is at least somewhat conclusive. And it is well documented that higher levels of iodine in the body are also linked to better mood, improved mental performance, uh, even higher IQ, superior cognitive abilities, enhanced enhancement of the nervous system, mood support, greater immune system function, reduction of cysts, regulation of hormones, uh, helps clear the skin and prevent acne, thyroid balance, proper function, fertility support, assistance with a healthy pregnancy and healthy development of the baby during pregnancy. So, man, so what dosage, what dosage was used to get these patients to that level of saturation where they are excreting at least 90% during a loading test? And furthermore, what dosage uh, is, was used to maintain that level after saturation was achieved? So this is another complex question. Um, according to the documentation, the typical dosage in order to achieve body saturation would be slowly worked up over several weeks until reaching approximately 25 to 50 milligrams per day um, with, with the typical amount being 50 milligrams per day. And in some cases, um, uh, in some cases more per day and basically would continue at this level for several months uh, as the body is becoming saturated with iodine then the patient can retest their iodine levels and it can be determined whether to taper down to more of a maintenance dose. So the way this would typically work um, with these patients is that a typical person might take 12 and a half milligrams for five to 10 days, then 25 milligrams for five to 10 days, then 37.5 milligrams for five to 10 days, and then 50 milligrams uh, daily after that, just as an example of a typical patient, for three to six months or until whole body saturation is achieved. In some cases, it can take longer. Um, and that's as measured by the loading test when you finally can excrete at least 90% of the iodine. There are also reports of individuals, some individuals, who uh, didn't respond well until they took a higher dose, um, even up to 100 milligrams per day. Uh, now, there's a few factors that seem to have caused this, which is, in some cases, somebody who's overweight, they have a lot more body mass, or in some cases, somebody with very advanced um, a health issue or being very toxic, full of chemicals, uh, such as bromide. Um, it seems like dosages are better absorbed on an empty stomach. I can attest to this personally. Um, and also it seems like when the dosages are split up um, throughout the day that the body seems to absorb it more or utilize the, the iodine better. Um, so again, a few months after supplementing, um, somebody can test once again. Now let's assume somebody does this and supplements with iodine and then several months later they retest and now they're saturated and they're excreting at least 90 percent well um so at that point they could consider taking a maintenance dose to maintain that saturation and continue to um, excrete that much if they take the loading test and so a maintenance dose is reported to be somewhere between 10 milligrams to 50 milligrams a day for vast majority of cases. In some cases, um, individuals respond better to taking less. In some cases, maybe only a couple times a week or once a week, um, and maybe even on the low end of that, of that dosage spectrum. Um, Follow-up testing is a great tool to figure out, you know, how much iodine is my body retaining um, you know, am I still excreting over 90%? What, what maintenance dose do I need to, to still do that? So that's a great tool. Also, energy levels, feelings of well-being, um, how the person feels should also be taken into account to determine adequate dosage. 
um, for maintenance going forward after somebody has achieved saturation of iodine in the body. Um, okay, another point. Um, if somebody's considering uh, supplementing with iodine, that, that's pretty essential to understand is, you know, iodine is powerful for another reason, which is that it's been shown to detoxify chemicals from the body, especially bromide, fluoride, and even heavy metals like lead, aluminum, arsenic, cadmium, and mercury. So particularly um, suspect and when which gets detoxed out with iodine is the halides, which is bromide, fluoride, as well as perchlorate, which is a man-made uh, unnatural chemical. Chloride is not um, particularly harmful on such a toxic level as bromide or fluoride, but you can still get too much of it uh, when you think about you know, public water supply being so filled with chlorine. Um, now these molecules, these halides, are sim similar in size and characteristics to iodine. So basically they'll fill the same receptor site in the cell that iodine is supposed to go into. This creates a problem with iodine being absorbed. It creates a problem with basically the body, I don't want to say being tricked, but get, not getting the nutrient it needs, instead getting some other nutrient. Um, and if we were in the natural world, anthropolog anthropologically, going back a long time, uh, we wouldn't have had this issue as much because in the modern world, these halides are really used um, for modern things. Chlorine is used in the water supply. Fluoride is added to drinking water. It's added to toothpastes. And um, bromide is used in bread, flour production. It's also used as a fire retardant in carpets, in electronics, and vehicles. Um, so exposure to these bad halides is now very high. Again, it's, that's why iodine could be a modern solution to a modern problem. Um, iodine, you know, um, is not absorbed as easily because of these. Also, so therefore the theory would go more iodine would be required. Um, the other thing is that um, the very substance to detoxify the body of these chemicals is iodine. Um, and so that's why it seems like the, the need for iodine in terms of dosage amounts is higher today in the modern contemporary world. This goes back to the question of, you know, is it even natural to supplement with an isolated mineral like iodine? Well, maybe it's not natural, but it's also not natural to be exposed um, by all these concentrated toxins. So that's my philosophy on it at least. Now, as a result of this, when somebody supplements with iodine, sometimes it can cause fairly dramatic detoxification symptoms or AKA a healing crisis um, because of these halides and or other heavy metals that basically get dislodged and they're getting filtered out. While this is happening, they can get reabsorbed in the body's tissues, um, especially fat, skeletal, and brain tissue. So this can be uncomfortable, um, especially with, with bromide and fluoride detoxification. So bromide detoxification is, it can be pretty gnarly or it can be very mild, but um, some of the symptoms can include, include fatigue, irritability, headache, coughing and mucus formation, feelings of negative emotions, listlessness, uh, existential crisis, pain and stiffness, toxins coming out of the skin, uh, and or excessive sweating. Um, now here's here's one point, and I don't know if this is too complex, but if you can get your head around this, these same symptoms, uh, which could come out because of bromide detox, because you're, you're iodine supplementing, these same symptoms could still be occurring without undergoing this supplementation plan, uh, 
they could still exist in the body just on a milder level just based on the fact that these um, uh, basically these symptoms are already existing because the bromide is stuck in the body already it's just at a milder more ongoing perpetual level um, and so when you get it out it kind of exacerbates some of these symptoms but um, then if you can get it all out then you can create a better baseline because you don't have those mild perpetual symptoms going um, from 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 these things being in the body so just remember that the end goal with this approach is to rid the body of these toxic substances from a detox standpoint and it's also to saturate the tissues with beneficial iodine uh, from a nutrient standpoint so iodine helps to achieve both goals but detox from these things is not always a picnic um, you know sometimes some people have no issues other times they do personally I did I went through bromide detox pretty pretty heavily um, and in fact I even felt like I had a total existential crisis um, and it lasted for about 10 days and this was also uh, um, at the same time as basically coughing mucus headache mild headache um, kind of fatigue um, this is all happening now there is a method that can assist with this it's called the salt loading protocol um, because the chloride from salt can also remove bromide from the body as shown by, by studies in the iodine project so basically what you do is you get a very natural unrefined source of salt um, and you put a quarter to a half teaspoon um, in filtered water and then you drink it and then you drink another 12 ounces of that and then another 16 ounces of purified water and then after that you should expect to be urinating a lot and studies have shown that when someone does that more bromide is coming out in the urine uh, if you want to know which salt to use for that just go to rapidregeneration.com forward slash salt um, the other thing is that if detox symptoms are getting too intense somebody can pull back from the iodine they can go one day or two days and not take the iodine and then add it back up again to help control the speed of the detox um, also somebody could also consider um, taking an herbal protocol for herbs that will stimulate the lymphatic system and the kidneys to get out um, the toxic heavy metals bromide and fluoride this helped me a lot that's what helped me really turn the corner is I added in some of that and you can always find herbs that are recommended you know on on the website but um, rapidregeneration.com so but like I'm saying it's not always a walk in the park um, some people don't have any issues other people it's more dramatic um, I thought I was pretty cleaned out and healthy when I did this um, because it was several years I had already gotten healthy and well and everything um, and I'd taken smaller amounts of iodine but for me I had this dramatic healing crisis but you know what I felt so much better on the other side of it so um, but it is controversial there are um, there, there can be risks present although I want to address the extreme claims that sort of scared off the entire mainstream from using iodine from Wolf and Chakoff so these claims are basically logically unfounded they're speculative saying that um, okay when when these rats took iodine they had lower than normal T4 secretion in the thyroid and they had higher than normal TSH production in the thyroid and that basically this is a bad thing that the iodine is causing this and that basically the thyroids of these rats are basically um, acting in a way that's that's bad 
Um, so now a more reasonable explanation for this, why you would see elevated TSH uh, with somebody supplementing with iodine, it's very logical um, because the pituitary gland int basically intentionally raises TSH um, so that the cells can actually absorb iodine to help the sodium iodine symporter function of the cells. So this would be expected to see increased levels of TSH uh, earlier when someone is taking iodine supplements as the body is becoming saturated and it would be wise to monitor that over several months and see if T TSH drops back down after the cells have become saturated and absorbed much iodine. So somebody can test this. Um, now this wasn't, didn't happen. They didn't do follow-up testing. They didn't do any of that. They just made this speculation and it freaked out the whole mainstream community. But somebody can quantify levels of TSH in the body with a, um, a standard blood test showing thyroid function. But that's so logical why it would be increased and then again, um, especially in the early days when the cells are still not saturated. There's also uh, claims about the T4 decrease um, being, being a bad thing. And again, much more logical explanation is that T4 decrease is happening in the thyroid because uh, the thyroid has become sufficient with iodine. And so basically... Um, it's, it's uh, absorbed enough iodine, therefore it doesn't need to secrete more T4. Um, now this is a, a more logical theory, I think, than the, than the more dubious theory which espouses that basically the thyroid is being blocked by the iodine and therefore it's being underactive. Um, it seems more logical that it, it doesn't need to be active because it's sufficient with iodine. Um, so this is basically, you know, all of this, um, despite the fact that these concerns that were raised in the 1940s um, were basically theories and, and unfounded and not followed up on, um, the whole mainstream community still continues to think that, um, you know, iodine and higher levels of dosages are super um, controversial and they can cause problems with the thyroid and you have very smart educated people that are buying into this without investigating and doing like I did just a regular person um, and going in and and actually understanding the mechanisms um, to to see what's going on now to be fair there are some extreme cases of individuals who the risks of taking iodine seem higher. Um, for example, you can have an extremely rare instance of someone with a, a nodule of the thyroid that's so-called a hot nodule or autonomously functioning. They may have a poor response to iodine supplementation. You have, a, you have extremely rare cases of um, people who experience iodism, which is like a reaction to iodine where they might have fatigue or a headache that's been reported extremely uncommonly. So if something like this is happening, obviously somebody should stop and they should consult their medical professional if they need medical advice. There's also individuals who they're concerned about, um, about taking iodine because they have an existing issue with their thyroid function. So now in, in reality, it seems like Issues with thyroid problems are more related to a lack of iodine in, in the body. Um, and in fact, as part of the iodine project, with all these thousands of patients and all the people that have used the information since then, there are so many countless reports of people who are reversed problems that they were having with their thyroids not just their thyroids, breasts, reproductive organs, um, and other systems of the body after the body became saturated. So um, speaking of um, specific areas of the body, 
that have been reported to to benefit um, <clears throat> iodine of course is reported to help when it's consumed in a tablet but also there there's a liquid form of iodine that can be topically applied which is like a Lugol solution and there are reports where this is particularly effective when applied to the breasts of women because the mammary glands of the breasts concentrate an especially high level of iodine as well as when it's applied to the testicles of men um, it can also be painted on so to speak to the to the uh, to other areas of the body and you can find a quality tablet form of iodine slash iodide at rapidregeneration.com forward slash iodine tablet you can also find the liquid form at rapidregeneration.com forward slash liquid iodine so lastly <clears throat> And again, I, I told you there was a lot of nuances and it is important to understand um, basically, you know, all the nuances surrounding iodine because otherwise you could be exposed to more risk than you should be um, if you just go out and start taking iodine. So last point is it can be controversial, iodine can, because... The chemical reaction in the body that it, that it creates when it gets absorbed in the cells, etc., it is powerful. It can potentially create oxidative damage if it's not happening in a balanced manner. Uh, because just like you find other minerals in nature, they they one mineral requires other minerals and requires vitamins, and everything balances out synergistically. Otherwise, that mineral won't work. So taking iodine in, a, in an isolated form uh, can be especially risky. It can cause problems from oxidative stress. And basically, from a chemical standpoint, if enough other critical nutrients are not present. So here are some nutrients. Again, this goes back to the iodine project. It goes back to trial and error. It goes back to people figuring out the best things that works generally uh, but here's the ideal nutrients that work synergistically with iodine so when people took iodine and had success uh, to the degree that they also took these companion nutrients they had that much more success and people had would report more problems to the degree that they were not taking these other nutrients so the first one is um, is like a green powder Okay, if you take about 25 grams approximately per day of green powder, um, which, it, which has magnesium, potassium, iron, sodium, um, and many other vitamins and minerals, you can find that at rapidregeneration.com forward slash green powder. The second one is selenium, approximately 100 to 200 milligrams of selenium one to seven times per week. Um, there is some indication that a higher frequency of dosage uh, may be more appropriate during early iodine supplementation, um, especially during um, any bromide detox, followed by potentially tapering off that dosage later um, after the body's more saturated. You could also take you could consider taking selenium for a couple weeks prior to starting taking the iodine um, to help prepare the body for better absorption of the iodine. Um, and you can find that at rapregeneration.com forward slash selenium. Okay, the next one is vitamin C in the form of a sodium ascorbate powder, um, the alkaline form of, of vitamin C. Um, approximately 500 milligrams to 5 grams per day. That's a large dose. Um, one to seven times per week. And again, with more frequent dosage and higher dosage, often preferred earlier on during the higher iodine dosage. And if any detox symptoms are going on. 
And you can find that at rapidregeneration.com forward slash vitamin C powder. Um, again, uh, next up, many individuals also report doing well taking vitamin B2 and B3, which helps with the cellular energy cycle. And so um, that would be B2, riboflavin, 15 to 400 milligrams, one to seven times per week. Um, and B3, niacin, 110 to 400 milligrams, one to seven times per week. Um, and you can find that at rapidregeneration.com forward slash B2 and forward slash B3. Um, somebody also might, for convenience sake, consider taking a full B complex instead of B2 and B3 individually. You can find that at rapidregeneration.com forward slash B complex. Um, the next one is zinc, which is approximately 10 to 30 milligrams, one to seven times per week. Um, there is some indication that, once again, a higher frequency may be more appropriate during the beginning of iodine supplementation and then potentially tapering it down, even potentially dropping it off in some cases after that. Um, rapregeneration.com forward slash zinc. Um, then you have magnesium, 150 to 600 milligrams, one to seven times per week. Um, be careful with this one because somebody could also could already be getting um, more than enough magnesium um, in their foods depending on the foods that they're eating um, obviously magnesium from food is much more bioavailable um, and so maybe somebody doesn't need additional magnesium some people do um, rapidregeneration.com forward slash magnesium and lastly of course you have um, Consideration for sea salt, all natural sea salt, uh, quart, one quarter to one half teaspoon added to foods throughout the day. Um, and again, this seems better utilized during the early stages of iodine supplementation, and especially if there's bromide detoxification going on. And then perhaps this can be tapered off as the body becomes more saturated with iodine, more cleared out of bromide. And of course, this can also be done in conjunction with the salt loading protocol that was mentioned earlier, where you take a quarter to a half teaspoon of salt with 12 ounces of water, and then followed, followed by another glass of water, 12 to 16 ounces. And you could do that one to two times a day or as needed. Um, so those are kind of the nutrients that work synergistically with, with, synergistically with iodine. It would be risky in my view to start taking higher dosages of iodine without these other nutrients. So personally, I know some people, maybe they don't want to take isolated vitamins and minerals and etc. That's covered separately in another segment of rapid regeneration. But I'm just telling you what the deal is in all these cases that were that were studied thousands um, and of course dosages should be individualized uh, for best results somebody needs to figure out do they do better uh, with with some supplement consumed daily every couple days once a week um, or what amount of the doses that they respond to I can't sit here and say you know take uh, you know, take 537 milligrams of X thing, you know, once a day, regardless of your body weight, regardless of your lifestyle, regardless of your diet. Uh, I just can't do that. I mean, that would just be irresponsible. So these uh, doses amounts should be individualized as well. Um, now, this can be daunting. I know this is a lot of information. Um, going at this alone, is uh, can be intimidating. Um, I know it's a lot of information. You know, it does help to have some guidance and mentorship. Um, just be aware, many mainstream people, uh, they're ignorant about this in the scientific community. They're still blindly following dogma from almost a century ago that's based on basically faulty claims. Uh, you can find a practitioner who knows about iodine supplementation, who's familiar with the research from the iodine project, um, and I will include a resource if you'd like to locate a practitioner. If you want some 
personalized assistance um, and I'll I'll put that on the link uh, rapidregeneration.com forward slash iodine practitioner um, and by the way I almost forgot if you need that salt just you can find it at forward slash salt but again that's forward slash iodine practitioner I'll throw up uh, some resources to find somebody like that so there's a lot of nuances there's a lot of subtleties okay this issue is not black and white um, this is a tiny little trace element but it is dramatic let me just tell you I I don't think I you know was thorough enough in uh, in talking about this in the beginning but it's dramatic I I just feel good when I take iodine I I feel good I mean I, I don't know I don't know what else to say I mean that's that's one reason I like it aside from all this other stuff um, and you know I, I don't claim to have all the answers I'm still trying to figure this stuff out I do I mean I have obsessed and spent a ridiculous amount of energy to um, understand this very in depth and so I hope that my full spectrum analysis of this will will be helpful will be something that you'll find helpful um, so that's my mission and um, the truth you know goes to those who are willing to put in the work and um, discerning it's not always e not always easy and so um, just good job for trying to figure it out being a truth seeker and I do believe this information is revolutionary um, I'm honored to be part of a movement which is really about taking back our health and wellness as a species I wish you great discernment to figure out for yourself uh, what to do if this little molecule is worth supplementing if so how does it fit in your life and um, I'm just excited I mean it just it made a big difference for me um, and I'm just really grateful for it. I'm grateful for the information, the, the people, like from the Iodine Project. Thank you, a special thank you, and, and anyone who's sort of pioneered um, this to, to help human beings because it helped me a lot. Um, and so I'm doing my part to help you. If you have any questions, um, if there's anything I can do um, to provide additional information, you know, I try to be available and there's ways to contact me on social media and on the website um, and so it's my mission to help you rapidregeneration.com that's the mission and so um, go after it good luck figure it out for yourself and that's all for now take care for more information please follow at rapidregeneration or visit rapidregeneration.com.